Uh, I would also like to start with uh, thanking the organizers for allowing me to to give a sort of an old fart uh, talk. So for, this is specifically for the for the students and the postdocs who may have gotten uh, may have gotten concerned and may be wrestling with existential questions. Should I really be become a crystallographer? You know, is this the field uh, structural biology uh, still the field uh, to be? So I, I'd like. Uh, to give my perspective, and I, I think there's, 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 you know, the, the, the future for structural biologists, the structural scientists, is actually very, very bright, and I think we're just moving into a, into a new phase. Um, so I'm giving this talk also on behalf of Samir, and I think Samir is in the in the Slack, so he, he can already answer questions. And so Samir is the the project lead for the for the AlphaFold DB and the three D beacon. So if you have specific questions about that, uh, he, he can answer them uh, in in the Slack. So AlphaFold, I mean, the, the past few days have been really an eye opener that, that if you did a word of all the words that people have said in that talks, I think AlphaFold would be a very big, uh, prominent, take a prominent place in that, uh, in that, in that word. And, and so I think it's, 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 it's not an exaggeration to say that definitely structural biology, but in the long term, even biology changed uh, uh, significantly uh, by the middle of, uh, of, of last year. Uh, so first there was this the publication of, of the AlphaFold paper and the RosettaFold paper uh, in mid-July and the software being made available by both teams uh, as open source. Uh, and then a week later, uh, the announcement of the AlphaFold uh, database, structural database. Uh, and if, if, like you all should, you're subscribing to CCP4 bulletin board, you were amongst the first to, to find out about that. Uh, uh, and uh, it has it had uh, quite, quite a bit of... Uh, of impact. Um, so suddenly we had this completely new resource for all of biology, but uh, of course also for, for structural biologists, AlphaFold DB. Uh, we started out with 365,000 uh, models, and these are unique uh, Uniprot uh, protein models. So the PDB is 180,000 or so entries and roughly 55, 60,000 unique uh, proteins. So this, this already meant uh, an increase by, by the a factor of five, six of the, of the, the coverage of, of sequence space uh, by, by structural models. Uh, and in December, as you've heard uh, from, from Robbie, there was uh, uh, all of SwissProt was, uh, was added. Uh, so we're now over 800,000 and there will soon be uh, another update uh, focusing on pathogens and, and uh, neglected uh, diseases. And then of course, the big, the big thing later this year will be to have the full uh, UNIREV-90 uh, release, which will take the total to over 100 million. I mean, the, the mind boggles if you if you think about that. Um, uh, there's a paper in uh, NAR, which was also referred to by Dan yesterday on, on the AlphaFold uh, database. So if you want to read that, you can type that bitly link into your browser and uh, you'll be taken straight to the, the NAR page. Um, something which not all of you may have noticed, uh, but there was three months later, there was another significant announcement of something called 3D beacons. And again, this is Samir's uh, baby in a way. Uh, this is not a new resource in itself, but it's somewhere where a place where uh, structural resources, both of experimental data and, and uh, theoretical models uh, work together. They register all the proteins for which they have a model uh, in, in, their, in their resource. Um, and there is then a central hub, uh, which can be accessed either through the web, where you can do simple searches by, by Uniprot accession, or through an API, so you, you can include it in, the developers can include it in their own uh, software. And what it returns is a, a, an overview of, of, if you provide it with a Uniprot idea, of all the models that are available, both experimental ones, template-based ones like from Swiss model, or the, the machine learning ones like, like from AlphaFold for, for that uh, particular uh, Uniprot ID. So at the moment, this list is still growing, but the PDB is there, uh, Protein Ensemble Database are also experimental models, and SESPDB are also experimental models. And then the, the, the theoretical models come from uh, AlphaFold, Genome3D, and, uh, and Swiss model. And as I said, this, this, this list is still growing. So suddenly there's this, you know, amazing wealth of structural data at your fingertips uh, and, and obviously we, we, we expected that this would have uh, have some impact uh, when I heard the first time about the plans in, in April or so for this this hundred million structures it, it just it just boggled the minds and uh, I imagine more than one crystallographer has gone through all five stages of grief uh, some of them very quickly because the 
uh, or I did the next day after the announcement, I got started getting emails from people that said, oh, we downloaded this model and finally we could solve a molecular replacement in, uh, in five seconds uh, for a structure we, we couldn't solve for, for, for many years. Uh, so there was there were many questions, uh, you know, what you know, what, what happens? Uh, I just started my PhD in crystallography, you know, what, what does it mean for me? Will they stop funding synchrotrons uh, now? Uh, should I even have bothered because I could solve my structure now with uh, with, uh, with all these alpha fold models? Um, so is this the end of structural biology? No, absolutely not. On, on, on the contrary, I would say, I think it's the start of structural biology 2.0. We, we move into a whole new uh, era of, of structural uh, biology, but we're still going to need many structural biologists and structural scientists to uh, to, uh, to to make the most of this this uh, this this new this new era. So there are still limitations uh, to, to the prediction methods. I'll, I'll, I'll address a few of them uh, briefly, even though many of them are are, are being addressed already, as you heard from Dan Rigdon uh, yesterday. There is still a need for 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 experimental validation, but mostly, you know, you would look, you would you have to look at the opportunities. There's so many things become possible that you know were, were even unthinkable half a year ago before before this uh, this this uh, these these breakthroughs uh, happened. So structural biology, I think we will be doing differently uh, now than than uh, than before and in the future than we did it before. Uh, biology, all of biology, will all you know. People interested in molecules and genes and proteins. Uh, this is a whole new world uh, for them. But uh, specifically, there will be an enormous need for trained structural scientists because all these, you know, geneticists, etc., they don't understand, they don't know 3D protein structures, and they're going to need help in uh, in uh, getting to grips with those and, and interpreting uh, them correctly and assessing them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so the limitations, these are the, some of the ones that, that we realized uh, uh, early on when, when we released AlphaFold uh, DB. Uh, and as I said, Dan already uh, presented yesterday that a lot of these things are already being addressed. Uh, you heard about AlphaFill, for example, this afternoon. Uh, you probably want to check BioArchive after my talk because there may be new papers uh, in BioArchive that, you know, that address uh, particular uh, aspects uh, of these, these, these current limitations. So there has already been progress from, from both AlphaFold and RosettaFold and, and also other teams on, on predicting complexes. Uh, we still can't do RNA and DNA to the, same, to the same level, but you've heard already solutions for people adding ligands and metal ions and cofactors and, and glycosylations, et cetera. So there's, there's clearly progress. Um, we're predicting fold, not folding, so it doesn't help us understand how proteins fold, but it, it uh, uh, there's, so there's still work work to be done uh, there. Uh, there are no dynamics or prediction of, of, of multiple states, maybe to some, to some extent. But for example, with uh, intrinsically disordered proteins, we, we don't generally find out what the structure state looks like if there is one when when the protein interacts with the with a partner. Uh, and also prediction of effects of uh, destabilizing point mutations uh, are not are not. Uh, not 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 straightforward uh, at the moment as far as we uh, we understand it, so. um there's still a need i think to 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 better understand the accuracy and the limitations in terms of the, the structural prediction so you know we still need to determine structures uh, with x-ray nem and, uh, and nmr uh we have to understand all these unstructured regions so for me seeing uh all these these spaghetti bits, which which Jane just complained about, it was a conscious decision of particularly Samir to keep these in, just to show you know how much of a protein is may, maybe uh, you know, not not in an ordered uh, state, and it made me realize how, how our image of what a protein looks like has been completely biased by whatever crystallizes, because whatever is in the PDB crystallized, and it only crystallized if it's compact and and and, and not and not uh, disordered. So something like this would, would never crystallize, uh, obviously, like this. So it, it, it changed my idea of, of you know, what, what proteins uh, uh, look like. Uh, we also need uh, experimental data. Uh, you know, if, if you have these models, we can see if is there existing uh, experimental structural data that, that, that we can uh, uh, test this model on, or uh, can we collect uh, new data? Uh, does it look like any known structures if you, if you get a new fold? Of course, uh, the opposite question is also, are there unknown folds that we've never seen before in, uh, in, in crystallography or in the EM structures uh, that are lurking in this, this, this alpha fold uh, uh, database? 
And also there may be a wealth of biological information and data that we, we, we can't typically use in, in validation uh, uh, efforts at the moment, but which obviously uh, can be brought to bear now in a more manual way. So if, if we know anything about the protein's function, the interactions, its, its specificity or any uh, effects or mutations, uh, we can use that to, to, to validate this. And I think also more generally, we, we should be thinking about methods to, to, to automate this uh, by looking for databases with information about proteins that, that we can uh, uh, test on the on the on, on the models and again if you've been going to the CISP for study weekends uh, it's great that these proceedings have been available for for over 30 years because you know very often there are old papers that are still very useful and insightful and so there was in in the 1990 proceedings there was a paper by Stefan Knight, Inge Anderson and Carla Brandian and as far as I know this was the first paper in protein crystallography that were, it used the word validation uh, and they already discussed uh, in how they validated their obisco structure. It was not about uh, bond lengths and bond angles. It was about using biological information, information about uh, the heavy atom uh, sites, uh, etc. Um, so I think we, we need to rethink how we how we validate uh, models by using more biological information, which, which is not so easily to transform it into a, a you know, numerical uh, restraint. Um, so I, I think. As I said, we we're entering into a new era for, for structural biology. Uh, we should keep in mind that the, the goal of structural biology is not to determine structures, it's to, 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 to gain insight on, on, on biology uh, and uh, you know, how does a protein function, uh, you know, what's the mechanism of, of an enzyme, etc. Uh, and not, not just uh, determining uh, structures. And so the great news is for structural biologists, your structural studies can now start with, you know, with, with a model that is your, your null hypothesis. And then you can design experiments, including uh, structure determination, to, to, to test uh, that, that, that hypothesis. And so you can use these models to, to, to do construct engineering, you know, because it may turn out that the protein you try to crystallize uh, it consists of, of, of five different uh, domains with lots of spaghetti uh, around it. And so you can use that to, 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 to uh, maybe only express the, the stable domains and then try to crystallize those. Uh, you can design and determine uh, the structure of mutants uh, even before you have your, your, your first crystal. Uh, look at complexes, uh, small molecules, for example. You can do it in silico compound screens or fragment screens as soon as you, the alpha fold model suggests that there is a particular site that, that might be uh, susceptible to, uh, to, uh, to, to dragging or binding, binding ligands. Uh, and of course, one thing. You know, something you'll never find in the AlphaFold database is serendipitous discoveries. So many, there are many examples where people uh, expressed and purified their protein and it retained a fatty acid or, or a phosphate or, you know, uh, these kind of things, of course, uh, serendipitous discoveries re re still require uh, uh, experimental structure determination. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've been very impressed uh, the, the last few days to, to see how, how the, 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 the micromolecular crystallography community has has uh, adopted uh, alpha fold and, and uses it to, to turbocharge uh, the whole the whole field in biology uh, the impact is is also going to be uh, enormous i think so where, where you in the past if you were interested in a particular gene or a protein you would you would uh, start with uh, with with a, a sequence and and do all sorts of analysis to try and predict things you, you will now have a model. If, if it's not in the PDB, it may be an alpha fold DB. And if it's not an alpha fold DB, you, 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 can, you can generate it yourself with, with, with alpha fold uh, uh, or, or Rosetta fold or any of those other uh, methods. And again, uh, if you have a model, uh, you can look up all data uh, on, on, the, on the function, et cetera, and see if that, if that can be explained in, the, in, the, in light of the, the model. You can design new, new experiments. Uh, uh, based based on the model, and you know, keep in mind as, as a structural biologist, all these geneticists and uh, agricultural uh, scientists, etc., they're going to need help of of, of uh, structural biology expertise to 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 interpret uh, those models, to design experiments based on upon them, and to interpret uh, the outcomes of of those experiments. So it, it, it's you know, structural biologists are going to be needed everywhere. I would I would imagine. So I think there's in fact uh, yet another golden age for structural biology ahead. So we, we've had we've had uh, several golden ages in, in the past, and, and this this is just taking it to uh, to a new level. Uh, structural biology will in many cases be accelerated the structure determination, 
uh, but also the study of, of complexes, even if the if progress were, were to be slow, which, which I don't expect in, in predicting complex structures, uh, there'll be you know, whole, whole new interest in studying dynamics, uh, intrinsically disordered proteins, etc. The structure prediction field itself will be re-energized and there's all, well, they're not new challenges, but I think there will be a whole new uh, uh, energy in, in, in that field to, 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 to tackle uh, the problems of protein-protein complex, but also protein and nucleic acid complexes and protein ligand complexes. Uh, this, this is, of course, something that a lot of companies are making a lot of money uh, with prediction and docking methods. And uh, imagine if there came uh, a much better method available based on, based on, uh, on deep learning, which would revolutionize that, that field as well. Um, there are amazing challenges if you're interested. 15 in minutes past. Yeah. Uh, so analyzing, comparing, uh, you know, 100 million models is, is something that, uh, you know, is a daunting task to say the least. We need new tools for, for comparison uh, at, at, this, at this scale. There's challenges for model validation, just uh, uh, as Jane said, these models have been trained on, on the PDB. So, of course, they're going to have to, to pass a lot of the, 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 the current uh, validation uh, tools. But also, if people fit if I thought model to 12 long term EM map, how are we going to validate that? I, I don't know. And there's challenges for all the, the users and the teachers. So all biologists will need to learn about 3D structure, how to assess and interpret and use 3D models. And, and we're going to need new tools so that even people who are not structural biologists but, but want to use these, these structures uh, can, uh, can do so. Uh, so uh, just uh, for those of you who are interested in, in solving structures, uh, even if you don't have crystals yet, uh, we now have a search in, in, in EMDB, and you, if you type this into your browser, you, you get exactly this, this search, which will give you all the entries in EMDB for which um, there is no map, but, sorry, there's no model, but there is an alpha fold model. So there's no structure in the PDB, uh, but there is uh, an alpha fold model. So you could take one of those cases, take the model, alpha fold model, take the EM map and, and try to dock it and, and refine it. So th there's a couple of very high resolution. Those are usually trivial things like apoferritins where people have just tested a new microscope or a new detector. But there's, there's quite a few in, in, the, in the, the three to, to say six Armstrong range that, that might well be suitable for, for uh, uh, structured uh, solution now. Okay, so this is the, the, the final slide. I want to thank uh, many discussions during the whole project to, 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 to get AlphaFold DB uh, done with, with, with John Dumper from, from DeepMind and also Sriram Subramanian at, at UBC and, and our fellow structural biologist at, at MBO, uh, who also went through these five stages of brief uh, uh, in a very quick period of time be before we announced uh, AlphaFold DB uh, publicly. Uh, the Twitterverse exploded. Uh, it was really wonderful to see all the all the weird and wonderful tweets there. Uh, and as I said, the organizers for allowing me to give uh, an old fart talk. And, and finally, you know, keep in mind as, as a student uh, or a postdoc with existential questions that, you know, this is a keyboard and a slinky in silico. But what we really want to understand is how, how it, how, you know, how, how it looks and works and operates uh, in, uh, in, in vivo. So in the context of the cell uh, and those, you know, um, we are going to be able to explore this now, thanks to the fact that we're going to have reasonable uh, in, in silico models already. And so it, it's an opportunity, I think, to, 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 to revolutionize uh, all of molecular, molecular biology, essentially. So I'll shut up now. And if it's time for a question or two, I'll answer them. And otherwise, uh, can do it on Slack. So thank you. Indeed, thank you. So I see one question, an old timer style comment. Isn't, isn't it the case that the success of AlphaFold owes quite a lot to STEM collecting PDB entries if they are of high quality, not just to those that solve health biological problems? Sorry, what was the question? It's, it's, on, it's on Slack. Uh, it's, I don't know if it's a question or comment it, it, it's commenting on the if it isn't it the case that the success of alpha fold owes quite a lot to the stamp collecting pdb entries if they are of high quality yeah, oh, oh absolutely absolutely no, make no mistake i mean there would be no alpha fold if there was no pdb so it's not just the structures but the fact that they have been archived by the community for for 51 years now you know it, 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 that's 
and that you know the the my people acknowledge that uh, every time they, they they give a talk. You go yes, of course. And I don't think well some of these structures were maybe stamp collecting, but I, I use it facetiously the the, the term. Uh, uh, but many of the structures, of course, were, were not collected for the sake of, of, of doing the structure. It was to understand biology uh, in, in, in the first place. So absolutely. But now you can see this, you know, DeepMind uh, and EBI, we, we've done the stamp collection for you. We give you the, 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 the whole album with all the stamps of the world. And, you know, you can now use this to, 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 to address biological questions uh, much more easily than uh, first having to crystallize and you know, get crystals and solve the structure, et cetera. So we yeah, are no, this is absolutely nothing. Uh, uh, I didn't mean to be degrading about uh, all the efforts of the past 50 years in, uh, in crystallography to, to get all the stamps uh, there. There is also one interesting. Do, do you see any areas of conflict where, say, scientists who are not structural biologists will leapfrog to conclusions with alpha fold models that are not supported by experimental experiments, uh, say, because it's too difficult to make crystals? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So that, that's why I say, you know, the, we, we need to, to, to learn and to teach uh, you know, how, how to assess these models and uh, you know the, the fact that you know the, the bits that are yellow and and maybe even orange you know you shouldn't even believe you you shouldn't look at them they're there but uh, you know don't 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 go and, and design mutants based on or draw conclusions about based based on on, on these, these 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 aspects of of those models so but that we have to I think more more fully come to come to uh, to, uh, to grasp exactly what 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 the, the limitations are in terms of you know what what, what conclusions can we draw from these models uh, uh, and and we also have to teach this to, to imagine this if it's difficult for us you know imagine what a geneticist who gets one of these things and, and probably thinks the spaghetti is all real and that, oh wow this is what my protein looks like uh, so it, it, there's a huge task there in, in terms of, of education uh, as well. There's a question in the Q&A. Um, do you think that uh, new software able to perform near perfect docking might appear in the future and eventually substitute structural biologists? It feels like alpha folds and docking programs might take the place of structural biologists soon. <laughs> well, yeah, so I, 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 don't think, I, don't, I don't think so. But well, we'll have to see. I mean, we probably said this uh, up, up until uh, a few years ago. We said this about structure prediction. You know, this, this will never, this is never going to replace uh, uh, experimental structure determination. But um, we'll, we'll have to see. But you know, I, I think that there the, the will for, for, you know, for a long time be a need to, to, to actually do, get experimental confirmation of, of structures uh, and complexes in different states as well. Uh, you know, that's just having the structure of the ribosome, uh, you know, you want to see it in, in, all, in all the different states uh, and that, that may not come from, uh, from, from prediction uh, alone. So, yeah. I, yeah, yeah sure. I, I, I've just opened this very fruitful discussion uh, and probably kind of direct you to, to Slack. We will try to copy these, like transfer the, comments and, and questions which are in Zoom, because okay. I guess we are supposed to clear this room. <laughs> so I, I would like to thank all the presenters from this session, actually from today, <laughs> and see you. Okay, we'll be back in 10 minutes, so 10 past or so the next session. Thanks.